Now, there are wrestlers who make it in the biz who enjoy a level of success that doesn't seem to match their in-ring skills, hello Ultimate Warrior, and similarly there are wrestlers who make it in the biz who enjoy a level of success that doesn't seem to match their ability to draw, hello Jeff Jarrett. On the other hand, there's a whole heap of very talented wrestlers who were incredibly skilled workers and terrific entertainers who never achieved the level of success and fame that they deserved. As a disclaimer, some of the guys on this list did win titles, in fact one of them has won an awful lot of titles, but that doesn't mean they can't be underrated. Oh no, these are the guys who, when people talk about great wrestlers, are often overlooked. I'm Adam Pacitti from WhatCulture.com and this is the Top 10 Underrated Wrestlers. Number 10, Bam Bam Bigelow. Without a doubt, one of the best big guys in the history of professional wrestling, and if you disagree, you are absolutely incorrect. Not many 300 pound guys utilize aerial offense in their moveset, and nobody did it as well as the late, great Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam wrestled in the WWF, WCW, and ECW, as well as all over Japan, and although he won the ECW Heavyweight Championship and WCW Hardcore Championship, that was pretty much it. Unless you can a Slammy Award for Best Head in 1987. No, I'm not joking. Amongst others, he had great matches with Bret Hart, Shane Douglas, and Chris Candido, and he had a unique look that should have propelled him to a much higher spot on the card. Sadly, it never happened. Still, he had a great head. A great award-winning head. Number 9, Barry Windham. Newer fans may not have even heard of Barry Windham, which is unfortunate because he was terrific. The son of wrestler Blackjack Mulligan, he's probably best known for his work with the NWA and WCW. And you know what? The guy held a lot of gold. He's a former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, United States Heavyweight Champion, Television Champion, and a two-time WWF World Tag Team Champion with his brother-in-law Mike Rotunda, you know, IRS. Bray's dad, cool. He's also in the Hall of Fame as part of the Four Horsemen, high praise indeed, so why is he on this list? Because he never really got the respect he deserved, it's that simple really. He had a great look and put on great matches across the board, but I guess when you work so closely with someone as highly acclaimed as Ric Flair for so long, it's easy to be overlooked. Which sucks because Barry, you were the man. Number 8, Arn Anderson. Speaking of horsemen, here's one of the founders, the enforcer Arn Anderson. Well, he was tough as f Whether he was winning tag team gold with Tully Blanchard or beating the hell out of Dusty Rhodes, the enforcer of professional wrestling was a man amongst boys. Feared by most, but respected by all, Anderson was a hell of a worker who could also cut an intense promo. It just feels like nowadays, Arn's name is only really brought up when somebody hits a spine buster, which is, well, bullshit. He was a true professional who even used his retirement angle to put over WCW's newest acquisition, Kurt Hennig. Speaking of which, number 7, Kurt Hennig. If you've ever seen a Hennig match, which I'm sure you have, you'll know that he was an unbelievable in-ring technician. His matches with Bret Hart are some of the best and he had everything one needs to become a world champion, but never got the belt. He did have lengthy US and intercontinental title reigns, but with his tremendous talent he deserved to have so much more. Hennig's presence in professional wrestling is truly missed and you can only imagine the contributions he would make to the industry if he was still around today. In fact, since his death, Vince McMahon has credited him for raising the accepted standard of technical wrestling. He was that damn good. Number 6, The Dynamite Kid. There's only one word to describe The Dynamite Kid. Pioneer. He's widely considered to be one of wrestling's most influential in-ring performers. In fact, Bret Hart himself has said that Dynamite was perhaps the best wrestler he ever saw. He merged traditional wrestling styles from Britain, Mexico, Canada and Japan to create compelling and exciting matches that fans hadn't seen the likes of before. He was a one-time WWF Tag Team Championship holder with Davey Boy Smith, but unfortunately his career took a downward turn following a back injury suffered during a tag title match against Don Morocco and Bob Orton in late 1986. Doctors warned him to never wrestle again, but he did until he suffered a seizure at an airport, forcing him to end his career. Nowadays when people talk about Dynamite, it's often in relation to his personal life, his demons, his backstage antics, and well, generally him being a bit of a prick. But here's a guy who could have gone far. Number 5, Brian Pillman. Following the end of a successful football career, Pillman soon began training as a wrestler under Stu Hart before working the Stampede Territory. He was then signed by WCW, where he found himself teaming with Steve Austin, forming the Hollywood Blondes. It says a lot that to this day, Austin attributes his early success to Brian Pillman. Pillman went on to win the tag titles on a few separate occasions in WCW, but that's really as far as he was able to get. He then signed with WWF in June 1996 and soon found himself in a hugely controversial angle with Austin, often remembered as Pillman's Got a Gun, in which viewers witnessed Pillman's friends dragging Austin from his house, while Pillman aimed a gun at him shouting, GET OUT OF THE F***ING WAY, I'M GONNA KILL THAT SON OF A BITCH. 
The WWF and Pillman eventually had to apologize for the entire angle, and unfortunately that's what people talk about the most when they speak about Pillman. Which is a shame because he was a terrific talker and a hell of a wrestler. Number 4, Rick Rude. Rick Rude is a guy with a great look, body, and charisma. It's hard to believe that the Ravishing One never became a WWF or WCW World Champion. After making his WWF debut in 1987, he quickly became one of the company's top heels. He had some stunning matches with the Ultimate Warrior, Piper, Sting. In 1991, he left for WCW, where he soon defeated Sting for the US title and engaged in a number of high-profile feuds, including an especially great one with Ricky Steamboat. Unfortunately, in 1994, Rude injured his back during a match with Sting when, upon receiving a suicide dive at ringside, he landed on the corner of the raised platform surrounding the ring. Rude was forced to retire from in-ring competition shortly thereafter. He was truly wonderful, and to this day, he is not talked about often enough. Number 3, Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts just oozed this indescribable charisma. The way he walked to the ring, his sustained eye contact, his movements when hurting an opponent, it all seemed so real, so malicious, so evil. You just believed everything he did. He was the master of in-ring psychology, who had classic matches with Savage, Martel, The Undertaker, and Steamboat. Although he never held a title in the WWF, he's highly regarded as one of the best mic workers ever and has inspired countless wrestlers with their promos. He never got angry, never raised his voice, but he made you need to see his match. He was so good. Whatever Jake was doing, you could not take your eyes off him. Trust me. Number two, John Cena. Come at me, haters. John Cena is the most underrated professional wrestler on the planet today. But Adam, how can he be underrated when he's a 15-time world champion? Well, maybe if you just let me talk for a second, I could explain. Right. Good. Sorry. Every time John Cena comes out, we still hear you can't wrestle chants from a pretty sizable section of the crowd, and that is bullshit. John Cena has put on incredible matches with CM Punk, Rollins, Lesnar, Owens, and most recently AJ Styles, but that doesn't matter because John Cena sucks. John Cena, f you. As far as in-ring storytelling goes, he's one of the best in the world, and yes, he's underrated. You know where the comment section is. Bring it on! Number 1. William Regal William Regal is one of the best wrestlers the world has ever seen. It's just that simple. The 40-year-old vet has won titles all over the world and is a four-time WWE Tag Champ, five-time Hardcore Champ, four-time European Champ, two-time Intercontinental Champ, as well as the 2008 King of the Ring winner, and without question, a future Hall of Famer. Regal's in-ring psychology is just flawless. He's as ruthless as anyone inside the squared circle, but unless you're a real Hardcore fan, he probably wouldn't be your go-to name as one of the greats, but he should be. Every role he's undertaken, he has excelled at, and he is always a joy to watch. Fortunately, over 40 years on since his debut, we still get to see Regal on our screens in his current position as NXT General Manager, which he's great at. Just, you know, one more match, please? So that's our list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam Pacitti from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon. Do you want to see WCPW live but are allergic to the awful people of Newcastle? WCPW is coming to Greater Manchester on Saturday the 8th of October to the Altrium Silver Blades Arena. Your ticket won't just get you a stack card featuring Cody Rhodes vs Kurt Angle, but will also grant you access to our first ever fan convention during the day. Meet the What Culture guys, have photos with your favourite WCPW wrestlers, a host of other surprises, and VIP members will get to meet Kurt Angle and Cody Rhodes in person. Tickets can be bought at WC.PW.